Let's take a look then. We've talked about then blockages of the upper respiratory. And again, this isn't exhaustive. There are many, many causes. But let's actually talk just for a moment about a few other things that commonly can relate to sleep apnea. When we look at an apneustic event, again, or the inability to breathe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only does the tongue start to go back, but these small, let's look in the back of the throat now. That little speed bag, and then behind the speed bag will be the tonsils, okay? And then you see this tongue that comes out this way. And then the teeth, of course, are hanging down on both sides. What's that little speed bag called in the back of your throat? It's that little dangler, right? Yeah, good. So, you of you, uh, it isn't the dangler. <laughs> My little dangler's off, it's itchy, right? So, the uvula, <laughs> the uvula and the pharyngeal arch, okay? This pharyngeal arch, referring to the pharynx or the soft tissues in the back of the throat, maintains a certain degree of tone. All muscle tone is maintained by our electrolyte, our sodium potassium pumps. Our ability to exchange those gradients, calcium, magnesium. And what we see is when we look outside the mouth, and we're actually now looking at the eye, what we see with the eye, when we shine a light into the eye, what we should see is this pupil will actually constrict. So we shine a light at that. And it should hold one, two, then release. What we'll see with the eye when we shine a light on the pupil is it will constrict, but then it will actually start to go like this and it will bounce. And we call that a paradoxical pupil. The paradox is the light shining in, but the eye muscles cannot respond. And these tiny ciliary muscles of the eye are the smallest muscles of the body and most sensitive to imbalance of electrolytes. So before you get the large muscle cramps, remember the Charlie horses? Oh, I just, it's the fourth quarter and I'm coming off, coach, because I can't play any longer. We've got these bad Charlie horses. Well, that's a big imbalance in your sodium potassium pump. You've sweated out some of your electrolytes, you're not recovering. You can actually see this, though, long before I'm getting muscle cramps at night. And this is what we call a paradoxical pupil. And the paradox is that it cannot hold when the light is being shown into the eye. So again, a paradoxical pupil. Okay. What is a paradoxical pupil indicative of? Adrenal exhaustion. So we've talked about the adrenals when we went through the thyroid. But this is a true indication of adrenal exhaustion. So imagine if the smallest muscles in the body are sensitive to this loss of tone because of a loss of electrolytes, because of a loss of adrenal tone, or the ability for aldosterone to recover our adrenal responsibilities of maintaining our urine volume, or excuse me, our blood volume by maintaining our sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, all of our electrolyte ratios, what begins to happen? These small muscles lose their tone which means then the retropharyngeal space loses its tone and when I'm lying down now that palate starts to lose its tone so it doesn't stay open. Okay. So the next procedure that can be done, of course, if it doesn't work, get a bigger knife, right? Go in and dissect out a portion of the pharynx and open up this area with the TNA procedure. So the tonsil adenoids are removed, and then we have a retropharyngeal opening or pharyngeal opening again. So a bigger knife. Well, how about let's go back stream and look at the adrenals. Okay? Let's look and see if we can return tone to the adrenals and restore adrenal function. And sometimes what we've found is by simply restoring the sodium potassium concentrations, calcium magnesium, or trace mineral concentrations in the body, 
we improve tone. So we've actually, you can all go online and find this product. You, I don't need to tell you a lot about it because it's actually out of the Great Salt Lake and it's called Bionativus. I've talked about this one before. Bionativus. And they have a trace mineral tablet or drop. And we've actually had people with sleep apnea and snoring just by using a trace mineral tablet or capsule at night and during the day, restoring their electrolytes and bringing those electrolyte levels back up, restore tone in the retropharyngeal space in the pharyngeal arch, and actually maintain tone in those small muscles. And they've actually improved their apneustic events or their dyspnea or their blocked airway just by using electrolytes. That's kind of neat. A lot cheaper than the knife and uh, still have the option if they'd like to do the knife later on. Um, but instead of using steel, we'll use some other metals. Okay. So if they're snoring, is there for sure loss of oxygen? Is that, I mean, do you know if they're snoring that they're not breathing? Okay, so here's the question. Does snoring indicate apneustic events? No. Okay. So they're still breathing, okay? okay? So apnea is not breathing. A mm -hmm. is without. Okay. Right. I just didn't know if that meant that they weren't. They're leading to it. Okay. Okay. And and sometimes snoring is an indication of them coming out of that apneustic event. Okay. Okay. So, but it is dif dyspnea, meaning they're having difficulty breathing. Okay. Right. If if we are all <laughs> okay. How many of you listened to that all night? <laughs> if you're walking around, or the puffing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, the puffer, the puffer is an, ex an example of the jaw dropping back. Okay, so in that case, roll up a, p a pillow and get his head back a little bit. Remember, when you do mouth to mouth resuscitation, what is the first thing as far as the procedure? Open the airway, right? You dip the head back slightly. Okay? A chin bungee, lift. Bungee cord on the ceiling. That's right. Bungee cord on the ceiling. Ceiling. Get that chaff work. What you're doing is most people sleep on a pillow that's too high and they get their head into a forward head carriage and then their jaw is going down and now they're. <laughs> trying to... He even does it on his side though. Yeah. Okay. So he does have then loss of tone in the pharyngeal arch. Okay. Now here's the interesting thing though. If you could actually take a, a small pillow and just make or even a bath towel and just make a small roll under his neck, it'll help to open that up a little bit. And just try that, okay? Just try that. Um, but again, we're actually dealing with a change in adrenals, okay? So we need to restore trace minerals in the body and get this balance back, okay? And that's a major, major cause of sleep apnea right there. <clears throat> because